Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, welcome to the Hater Show, a story written by a current prisoner with your favorite journalist, Tony. It just doesn't stop, ladies and gentlemen. This segment in particular revolves around an individual currently sitting on California death row. He has been convicted of murdering four people. Yes, you heard that right. Four different people. He also has ties to a cult. So this, this segment in particular is going to be something a little different from what you guys are used to. Okay, I'm going to ask you my four basic introduction questions, okay? Okay. So, what did they call you? Huh? So, what did they call you? What did they call me? Yes, sir. What, do you, what did they call you? Did you go by anything? You mean, do I have a handle? Yes, sir. That is correct. Do you, do you have a nickname? You got a handle, an alias. Uh, no, I, I, I just go by Gerald or my Native American name, Stone Spear. Where are you from right here on the streets? Uh, well, I'm originally from Oakdale. Three-way call alert. Do you or did you belong to any type of gangs, groups, organizations? Did I what now? Do you or did you belong to any type of gangs, groups, or organizations? Uh, no, I don't. No, I'm not affiliated with any gang. Where are you incarcerated for and how long is your sentence? Well, I was, I'm incarcerated for murder and my sentence is, is, is death. So you are currently sitting on, on California death row? Uh, technically, no. I'm in Corcoran right now. Uh, I'm in an infirmary. But, yeah, you you know, I was originally in, in San Quentin. Now, you said that, that you're incarcerated for for murder, correct? Yes. Now, I, I know I know that it's, it's a long story. Um, I, I'm pretty sure people want to know what was it that happened, man. So I'm going to go ahead and let you take over and kind of let, let you kind of tell me exactly what it is that happened that day, man. Can you tell me, paint the picture, man, what brought you to that city to begin with? And how did this whole thing play out? Oh, damn. Um, well, uh, like I said, I, I uh, we moved to this camp in Salida uh, in order to save money on, on rent, and uh, it was a dump. And uh, I was offered a, a, the position of manager, and uh, one day this guy, he moves in, and he hooks up his trailer uh, with an extension cord to this old man's cabin. And uh, he had no permission to do that, so I, I called the landlord, and he tells me, you know, let it go. Okay, so I let it go. And then one day, this guy uh, just starts, uh, he was a drug dealer, and uh, he had a bunch of biker friends come over, and they all were shooting up drugs and getting drunk, and, and they had problems. And they did these crowds, and you know, and uh, once they got all high, they started shooting their guns. So, being the manager, I went over there and told him, "Hey, you know, you can't do that. Don't don't, don't be doing that, or I'm going to have to call the police." And uh, after that, okay. Then I noticed that there were syringes, you know, used syringes all over the all over the ground. And uh, I told him, "Look, I don't care what you guys do." Go, but don't leave these things on the ground because there's kids around here and they walk around barefooted. 
And this was during the AIDS epidemic, so everybody's pretty uptight about that. Okay, uh, one of the neighbors had a little girl, and she used to come over and babysit. I mean, not babysit, but play with my two children. And uh, I asked her if she wanted a job. And she said, yeah. She goes, well, I told her, you go pick up, you know, just pick up trash and stuff around the, the court there, and, and, and I'll, I'll pay you so much. One day she came, she had a syringe in her hand. And I asked her, where'd she get that? And she goes, I got it over there. So I already knew that was the, the, the guy. So when my friend, my partner, he comes, he comes home from work, I told him to back it up to the guy's trailer and hook it up. And uh, the guy was inside the trailer and he was sleeping it off. And uh, <laughs> we hooked up his trailer and he comes out and he starts getting belligerent. And I said, look, and I showed him the syringe. I said, we had an understanding. You blew it. Now you're out of here. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll park the trailer anywhere you want me to. You tell me where. I'll, I'll park it anywhere you want me to. And we'll just leave it at that. You come pick up your car and your stuff and, and, and you're out of here. I said, if you don't, I'm just going to take your trailer and drop it off on the side of the freeway. And then it's your problem. Okay? So we cooperated. We got him out of there. And, uh, and he was a he was a bully. He 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 was kind of a, a, a terrorizing the little town there, and so he had all the people at the camp, you know, kind of terrorized. So when I kicked him out, all the people were happy, right? And uh, they came out. They wanted to set his car on fire. And I told him not to do that, and uh, I went back into my house. Uh, I'd say about an hour later, I hear the 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 the, the sirens from the volunteer fire department. I look out the window and they're they're going to this abandoned laundromat across the street. So I don't think nothing about it. Next thing I know, it, these people actually pushed that guy's car across the street behind the laundromat and set it on fire. Well, naturally, when the guy found out about it, he was pissed off and he blamed me for it. And he wanted me to pay for his car. Well, I told him, look, I'm not the one that burnt your car and I'm not paying for it. So then he started kind of starting to, to terrorize, to terrorize me in the camp. He was uh, driving around, honking the horn, him and his friends, right? He had, a, he had a gang. And him and his gang were, were, were harassing me day and night. And, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning, they'd come and slam on, on the side of my, my, my cabin. And they would, they would vandalize our property, you know, bust our fences and, and, and do all kinds of crazy things. Uh, one day I caught him and, uh, I called the, the sheriff's department and I, uh, I arrested him. I, I, I put him in handcuffs and I arrested him and I waited for the sheriff and the sheriff came, picked him up and I told him, I said, take this man into custody for vandalism, harassment, etc. Uh, you know, as a citizen's arrest. And the sheriff read him his rights, uh, gave me my cuffs back, put his cuffs on him, put him in the back of the car. And uh, he started hollering about, I better not press charges, I better not press charges. And so I got in front of the sheriff's car, you know, in the driver's seat, and I talked to him. I said, look, I said, why don't you let this go, and you go your way, I go mine. I go, I didn't burn your car. And all he kept saying was, uh, you know, you better not press charges or else. You better not press charges or else. So I said, you know what, officer, take him to custody take him to jail, uh, and uh, let me know when I can come press charges. <clears throat> so he goes, okay, we'll, we'll contact you. Well, the sheriff never contacted me, so I called them, and they told me, oh, well, that was up to the district attorney. Okay, well, the district attorney never called me, didn't want to do anything, have anything to do about it. At my trial, uh, the officer testified that when he was driving the guy back to the jail, the, the, he said, hey, how much is the bail going to cost? And the officer told him more or less what it was going to cost. And then he says, good, because I'm going to go back and harass Cruz. And that's exactly what he did. He kept doing it, doing it. I, I called the, the, the sheriff again, and it got to the point where they didn't even want to come out. Now, <clears throat> there, was a, uh, there was this other guy when, when we first moved there. Uh, I was given the, uh, there was this, um, uh, uh, storage shed 
And uh, the landlord said, you know, you're the manager. You can use the storage shed to put your stuff in. So I put my stuff in there. There was a guy in there sleeping. And the guy uh, had a fever. He was shivering. And I had two trailers, and I said, well, look, uh, you know, I didn't want to kick the guy out sick like that. I asked him what he was doing there, and he just said, I'm sick. I'm sick. So I said, look, man, why don't you go stay in one of my trailers until you get well? Because I need, I need this to, uh, to, you know, store my, my property in. And I go, you can stay in that trailer until you get well. You know, it's in, you know, it's, it's insulated. And so, okay, so he did. Well, it turns out that him and this other guy, uh, the, the drug dealer had a, had a problem because the, the drug dealer stole this guy's pistol and they were often getting in fights. Now, this guy had a girlfriend, the, the, the guy that was in the shed, he, he had a girlfriend and she started coming over because, you know, the boyfriend was in my trailer and uh, I got to know her and him and, and stuff and, uh, you know, met their acquaintances and stuff like that. So, uh, the cabin that I was in, it was very poorly insulated and it didn't have... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And so I had a, I had a uh, cook outside, you know, to barbecue my food. And when I did that, everybody came. And so naturally, I got to offer them something, you know. And so that's how I started associating with these people. Uh, well, then one day, uh, one day, the girl comes up to me and, and, and says, yeah, this guy... He uh, he kicked my sister out of the apartment, and he moved in. And so I got a problem. I got to get our furniture and, and property out of there, you know, because he kicked the sister out. The sister, I guess, went to L.A. Okay. So I said, well, uh, we'll help you. So we'll pick up the van, and we'll go over there, and we'll, we'll take care of it. So uh, now I knew me and this guy had a problem, so I went and bought a 12-pack of beer, right, to, as a peace offering. Took it over there. It turns out the guy, you know, drinks wine. He don't drink beer. So that, that was a waste. And we just started talking. Well, she, the, the girl was back there gathering some things. And then her boyfriend and, and this guy gets in a fight. And it just, you know, it, 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 just, it just goes south from there. And so I said, you have 60 seconds remaining. So we left. Now, um... I'm going to have to call you back because they're going to cut off. Then one day, this guy, uh, you know, he, he's, he's selling drugs and stuff like that, and, and, he, and he has a bunch of biker friends, and they come over, and, and they're partying, and they're shooting up, and they're drinking, and they're getting crazy, and they start shooting their guns. You know, like, I don't know, like in the old cowboy movies when the, we used to come into town and start shooting their guns all over the place like that. Okay, so I went out there and I told them, that, you know, they can't be doing that because the, the walls are thin and those bullets can, you know, can, can, can penetrate the walls and, and hit somebody. And then I noticed that there were syringes that they were using, that they were tossing them on the ground. And I said, and I told them that I didn't care what they were doing. That was their business. But don't toss the, the syringes on the ground because, you know, kids, there were kids there. They walk around there barefooted, and I didn't want them sticking themselves on those needles, especially with the AIDS epidemic that was going on at that time. So he said, okay, all right. So I left, and we left it at that. And then one day, one, one of the children came up to me and had a syringe in, his, in, in her hand. And I asked her, where'd she get that? And she goes, well, I picked it up over there. So I went over there, and, 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 uh, and I, well, wait a minute. Uh, I waited until my friend come, come from work, and I told him to back, back, back the van up to this guy's trailer because we were taking him out of here. And uh, the guy was in there sleeping it off, and then he, he wakes up because the trailer's being jacked up. And he opens the door and says, hey, what the hell's going on? And I show him the syringe, and I said, look, I told you I didn't care what you did. You do whatever the hell you want, but you can't shoot your guns, and you can't leave this stuff laying on the ground. One of these kids could, could stick themselves and then get AIDS from it or some other kind of disease. So I said, so you're out here. 
And I said, look, we can do this one or two ways, easy or hard. You do it the easy way, I'll take you anywhere you want to go. I'll park your trailer anywhere you want to go, you know, anywhere you want to park it. You do it the hard way, I'm just going to take your trailer and, and, and drop it off on the side of the freeway, and then it's your problem. So it was all right, all right. So I, I pick up the, uh, we, we take his trailer, my friend takes his trailer, goes and parks it where he, where he tells him to. The people in the camp, they all start cheering, and then, you know, because uh, he, this guy was a bully. And he used to bully these people around all the time, and, and he would bring all the riffraff there because he used to sell drugs. So they were glad that he was gone. So they wanted to, <laughs> they wanted to uh, set his car on fire. I told him not to do that, you know. Are you still there? I'm still here. Yes, sir. Okay, so I told him not to do that. And I said, I said, besides, I go, there's a eucalyptus tree there, you know, big hanging vines. I said, besides, you set that car on fire, you're going to catch that tree on fire, you're going to torch the whole damn neighborhood. I said, don't do that. And besides, we had a deal, he left, he's going to come pick up his car in the morning or tomorrow, and, 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 and that's it, he's out of your lives. So I went back to my cabin. Next thing I know, about an hour later, I hear the sirens of, of the volunteer fire department, and uh, they're, they're going to the laundromat. Well, it turns out that the people pushed his car, the people of the camp pushed his car to, to, to where the, that abandoned uh, laundromat was and set the guy's car on fire there. Well, naturally, the guy is going to get pissed off, and he blames me for it. So now he's telling me I got to pay for his, right? <clears throat> and I told him, I'm not the one to burn the car. I told him, I said, look, you and I had a deal. I, I kept my part. I go, I'm not in control of what anybody else does. Well, he kept on insisting for me to, to, to pay for the car. And I told him I'm not going to do it. So that started a problem. So he would, uh, so he would come around the, 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 the camp with his friends and all hours of the day and all hours of the night, honking their horns, uh, yelling out threats, all kinds of crap. Now, when I first moved there uh, and became manager, the landlord gave me the storage shed to, to, to pack my, you know. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Okay, so when I open up the door to the storage shed, there's this guy sleeping there, and he's shivering because he's, he's, he's got the flu. So I said, what are you doing here? And he goes, I'm, I'm cold, I'm, I'm sick, you know. And I said, well, look, i, I got to use this space to, to, to store my stuff. I go, but look, this place is drafty. You go, Why don't you go uh, uh, sleep in my, one of my trailers? I go, it's a lot better there until you get better. So he did. So he appreciated it, and we kind of became friends. And uh, his girlfriend would come over and take care of him while he was sick. And uh, it turns out that this guy had a problem with that other guy that I just kicked out. Uh, the other guy stole this guy's gun, and so there was bad blood between them. And one day the girl, the girlfriend came over and, and said that the guy, the, the drug dealer, kicked her sister out of her apartment and just squatted in her apartment. And uh, she needed help to go pick up the furniture and the belongings, but she was scared that the, because the guy had threatened her. So we all got in the van, and, and we was going to go over there to pick up her stuff. <clears throat> so I thought it was a good idea to make a peace offering to try to avoid violence. So I went and got a 12-pack of beer and brought it to the guy and offered it to him as a peace offering. The guy wouldn't accept it because he don't drink beer. That's what he says. He drinks wine. So, okay, whatever. So we're sitting there talking, and the boyfriend gets in a fight with this guy, and we wind up leaving, okay, because the whole thing just went south. And then uh, on another day, a couple days later, the girlfriend comes back and says that this guy is going to come with his biker friends. He just called his biker friends from, uh, I think he... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And they was going to come shoot up the whole camp and, and kill me and my, you know, everybody there, my, me and my family. And, and uh, 
And I said, well, where did he do this? And she goes, well, he called when I was there, and that was about 20 minutes. It took me 20 minutes to walk over here. He goes, look, I don't care about the furniture, but I want my grandmother's wedding dress. Can you guys at least help me make sure he don't jump on me because he threatened me with a knife. He was go he's going to stab me. I just want to get my grandma's wedding dress out of there. And I said, okay, we'll do it. So we went over there, and I said, look, this is how this is going to go down. I said, you and your boyfriend go in there. Your boyfriend's going to make sure he don't jump on you. And you go get your dress, you come out, and we'll put you up. I said, if, 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 if he's got friends in there and the fight starts, you guys yell, and my friends, they'll be out, out of the car, and they'll, be waiting, they'll go in and they'll help you. And I said, other than that, if it goes smooth, come out, I'll pick you up, and the deal's over. Well, they got in there. I parked the car. My friends got out of the car, and they walked away, and it was just waiting. And then uh, the boyfriend yells, hey, yeah, it's going down. So my friends ran to the, to the apartment, and they get in a fight. Well, it turns out these guys were, were jacked up on uh, uh, a PC, and... Uh, they, 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 it turned out to be a, a knife and club fight. Well, they were high, and so, you know, they lost the fight. And so, I went over there to see what the hell, you know, what the hell was going on. And when I got there, the fight was already pretty much over. And I just said, let's get the hell out of here, and we left. And uh, the next day, the, 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 the sheriff shows up, and he takes me in for questioning. And, and right there, that's when I find out that, that four of the people, you know, were, were dead. And he wants me, and there was witnesses, and the witness, and, and so the, 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 the officer tells me, he says, we know you actually didn't have nothing to do with it, but you, we know you were there. And we know that you've seen everything, and so we want you to testify about these murders. And, and I said, well, first of all, I said, they, they weren't, if those people died, they, they weren't murders. I said, they were still alive when I left. I go, I just went in, I was in there for one second, and I, and I left. And, and they were still alive. And I said, and if they died, it's manslaughter. I said, because it was a fight, and it's a fight that they started. I said, my friends didn't start the fight. They did. My friends went there to protect these other two people, and they got into a fight, and it escalated because they had clubs and knives, and so my, my friends fought them back. And he said, well, that's not how this is going to go down. He says, you're going to be the star witness, and you're going to testify that this was a premeditated murder. I said, but it wasn't a premeditated murder. Nobody planned this. So... Anyway, he says, well, if you don't cooperate, we're going to charge you too. And I said, charge me with what? I said, you just finished telling me that I didn't do anything. And you, and you have a witness that says I didn't do anything. He says, well, that's how it's going to, that's how it's going to go. And we'll charge you underneath the conspiracy law and you'll, basically you'll go to death row. And I will personally see you get, get the, the gas chamber. I, you know, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. But I told him, no, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. So I got arrested. They arrested me on a bogus charge, and then they arrested me for that, for that murder. Uh, they tried to say that I had a, a stolen, a stolen gun in my house, and I didn't, because I had receipts for all my guns. I, I bought all my guns at the two, um, at the two gun stores in Modesto, and I said, those guys know me. And I go, and they'll tell you, I got the receipts, it's in my safe, I can account for everything that I have. So that was just a, a, a pretense to hold me over. But anyway, so they arrested me on that. And so they went to the girl, they went to the girl and offered her the deal that I refused, and she took it. And so what was happening was that the, the, the officer would go to the, to the uh, women's facility and pull her out on the pretense that he was taking her to the sheriff's department to interview her. But he wasn't doing that. He was taking her to the burger stand, buying her hamburgers, and then taking her to the motel room and having her. And then he was giving her papers for her to rehearse to what to say as a witness. 
and the district attorney knew about it. Okay, he knew about it the, the, the whole the whole deal, and so that's you have sixty seconds remaining. So, um, you're coming back. She got up on the stand. She was she was impeached several times, you know. But nonetheless, the jury still bought it, and. Um, uh, uh, my lawyer, I, I had a dump truck for a lawyer, and, you know, I, I basically got the shaft. But uh, the, the, the girl who, t- who, who took the deal, her mother and her two sisters about to hang up on it. knew that what she did was wrong, and, and she had confessed to setting up the whole damn thing.